Welcome to week four Boom Bust Fantasy Football Show brought to you by the Fantasy Football Advice Network and Sellout Crowd. Yes, I said week four already. I can't believe it. I'm Corey, and I'm joined by my brother Kyle, the brains of the operation. We're going to break down some booms and busts at each position for your week four fantasy football matchups. So let's get to it, Kyle. Uh, what's first on your list? So our first quarterback boom here is going to be Mr. Russell Wilson playing at Chicago. Uh, not a great week for the Broncos last week against Miami, although Russell still had a you know fairly decent performance. Uh, you know he's been getting 15 points or more in every game so far, but Chicago is 27th in fantasy points against quarter quarterbacks. So. I think it's a really good opportunity for Russell Wilson and this offense to really get on track. I mean, Russell Wilson, he's actually been pretty good. He's only thrown two interceptions this year. Um, Chicago is not going to put up much of a fight. I, th- I think they come out one like angry after last week's game versus Miami. <laughs> Getting 70 put up on them, they're going to come out and try to prove a point. Like, we're not that team. No, I agree. I think there's going to be a little bit of the chip on the shoulder because they're kind of laughing stock after having 70 points put up on them last week. Um, and so I think their defense is going to come out and play much better, which will put the ball in the offense's hands uh, a little more too. And that offense, like you said, you know, Russell Wilson and them, they haven't been doing bad. They didn't have a good week last week. But I know, uh, like you mentioned, uh, I think his lowest scoring game has been 17 points all the way up to a 33-point game. So uh, I know it's quite a range, but it's it's much better than he was doing last year. I think you can rely on Russell Wilson. And then, like you said, the matchup is fantastic. Yeah. I also just want to acknowledge how absurd that game was last week. It was a video game. Is it, what it, was. it was. To have two running backs from the same team in the same week with four touchdowns is like a statistical impossibility, basically. I agree. So, that was uh, Ridiculous. Just wanted to acknowledge that real quick before we move along here. <laughs> All right, speaking of ridiculous, who's going to do a ridiculous job this week at quarterback? Yeah, Mr. Justin Fields. This guy, you know, we thought it was an offensive coordinator issue before, but he's kind of showing this year like he's just not – maybe still not ready to be a starter in the NFL. Like, he's making horrible decisions, holding on to the ball too long, too quick to try to tuck and run, missing wide-open receivers. Like, I just – I don't know. He's not hes not playing well at all. And they play, you know, that Denver defense this week who is actually, believe it or not, better than what they showed against Miami's insanely powerful offense last week. So – I really think he's going to struggle big time, continue to struggle big time this week. Yeah, I feel like people went in this season with really high hopes on Justin Fields after how he did last year. Um, And so, I don't know. I think he's got the curse of the Ohio State quarterback. And I think we're seeing that now. Well, people are just ready for him to run now. Correct. We've seen this multiple times with the same style of quarterback. We've seen it in the past. They're basically keying on that and daring him to throw it, and he's not making those throws. Yep, yep. I'm I'm not excited about Justin Fields right now. He has regressed for sure. Yep. So. All righty, let's move on to some running backs really quick then. Yeah, man. Running back, boom, Mr. Zach Moss against the Rams, which it's funny that we're sitting here in this position with Zach Moss because when he was with the Bills, it was like, he was so disappointing. He was this major, like, bust player, right? Gets new life in Indiana with Jonathan Taylor being out, and he's actually crushing it. Like, he has done a great job the last couple of weeks. This week they got the Rams, who don't play against the run very well. He's guaranteed that big workload. They've showed they don't want to split touches with anybody else. They really don't have anybody else healthy with Hull on IR. They released Deion Jackson, so – there's not really anybody else to split it with anyways. But, well, they got our boy Trey Sermon in there now. But Well, yeah, they brought Trey Sermon. Trey we lost a fumble in his first game with him. So, Ouch. Um, you know, I just – I think he's one of the safest plays this weekend at running back and just continue to ride that hot hand because – depending on what happens with Jonathan Taylor in a couple of weeks, or actually I guess this would be the last week he's on IR, 
does he come back next week? I don't know. But as long, like as, Zach, as long as he's not playing and Zach Moss is, I'm riding it because that workload and his effectiveness is up there, man. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that workload. Um, just for some perspective, guys, he had 30 carries last yeah. week. 30 carries on top of three targets. Uh, the week before that, it was 18 carries and four targets. Uh, so, yes, quite the workload. So, yeah. uh, and Nixon should be back this week, too. So, that could help open up even more running lanes for him. So, yep, yep. All righty. Well, let's go to your running back bust. Running back bust. And it's sad because he was a boom for me a couple weeks ago. Yep. Uh, Mr. Rashad White playing against New Orleans. Um, much tougher matchup. It's probably his toughest matchup to date at running back. And let's be honest, that offensive line is not making holes for him at all. I've heard a lot of chatter about, like, oh, he's going to lose his job to Sean Tucker. Sean Tucker ain't doing anything either. No. Because that offensive line is not blocking for the running backs. They're barely blocking for Baker long enough for him to get any throws off. Um, Watching the game against Philly the other night, you know, he had to make a ton of – these really short, quick timing throws and stuff. Like, the line is just not blocking for these guys, and that's not a Rashad White. But New Orleans, I think, is already a tough matchup against the run, but I think is definitely going to have a fairly easy time stopping the run against the Bucks. Yeah, I actually don't have much to add to that other than I know you said people were afraid of Sean Tucker. I mean, Sean Tucker had two carries last game um, to 14 for Rashad White. Uh Hey, Sean Tucker is not the issue there for Rashad White. No. It is that it's that offensive line at the moment. So, but all righty, let's go ahead and take a little break here to discuss the Fantasy Football Advice Network, guys. It is a social media website, one hundred percent dedicated to fantasy football. Uh, as you can see, the list there on your screen. Uh, you can read articles, watch videos, listen to podcasts. There's an advice forum where 24 seven, you can go on there and ask questions, post polls and get, uh, fantasy football advice. Um, there's also fantasy pros player rankings. There's trade calculators, uh, a league classifies to help fill, uh, your leagues. If you have empty spots there, if you're looking for a league to join. So all kinds of stuff, go to fantasyfootballadvice.com, join the community and have some fun. Uh, and there's a mobile app. So get that on your phones and you can have it with you all the time. All righty, Kyle, let's get back into this. Uh, and let's talk about your wide receivers. Yeah, my boom receiver. Uh, so goes Russell Wilson. So goes his top guy, Jerry Judy. He hasn't really had that breakout performance yet, but um, Chicago is actually last in the league fantasy points versus wide receiver ones. And so I really think this, like, this will be the week where Russ and Judy just kind of go off and get on track. And I'm pretty excited to see that actually, because Jerry Judy is extremely talented. You know, he's had some bad luck with injuries. And I think this week we finally see that breakout we've been waiting for as fantasy players. We can hope so. Let's just say the buzz is big on Jerry Judy. Um, so everyone's had high hopes. We haven't gotten to see it unleashed yet. And so let's just hope this is the week he comes along and it's super exciting for us all to watch. So uh, I've got him in a few leagues, so my fingers are crossed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Also, as uh, Oklahoma guys, I know we're also looking for Marvin Mims to have a big day. That <laughs> 100%. In that game as well. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad that he's generating some buzz in the league too. So, oh, absolutely. Boomer Sooner. All righty. Let's go on to the bust here. Yeah, my bust, Mr. Zay Flowers. You know, he's he's been playing really, really good. Unfortunately, they play against Cleveland this weekend. And Cleveland is fifth in uh, against fantasy wide receiver ones. So, going to have a pretty tough day. Cleveland's been playing a lot better defense. Um, I think than anybody really anticipated coming into the year. And so I, th- I think Flowers is going to struggle a bit this weekend to kind of keep up the momentum he's built so far. Be- I mean, being a rookie, you know, it's tough to go up against these top defenses like that as a rookie and, and be super successful. 
And like you said, Zay Flowers had a decent year up to this point. He hasn't had a game under 10 uh, points in PPR, but his best game came that week one with Mark Andrews out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mark Andrews is back and Lamar Jackson's running the ball, you know, because they lost JK. So it it doesn't play well to Flowers right now. And then on top of that, the tough Mm -hmm. matchup, it just doesn't, all those things combined does not spell for a good week. Yeah, that Cleveland pass rush, I think, is going to flush Lamar Jackson out into tuck and runs probably more frequently than even he has been. So, yeah, yeah, going to be going to be tough. He's going to be on security blanket Mark Andrews quite a bit, but I think Flowers, like you say, Flowers is not going to not going to flourish. Yeah, not, yep. not going to bloom, so to speak. <laughs> Because he's a flower, get it? Okay. Oh, on to the tight end. Uh, all right. Yeah, my uh, tight end boom, Mr. Pat Fryermuth. Um, he started. He started real slow uh, to the season, and then last week he was kind of coming on a little bit. This week they play Houston. Um, I think they're twenty third versus tight ends in fantasy points. I think there's going to be a lot of running with Najee and Jalen Warren, and then there's going to be a lot of Pat Fryermuth uh, this weekend. So they, they really seem to want to get him on track. He's one of the best, you know, red zone tight end targets in the league. Yes. So I think I think he finally gets in the end zone this weekend. I think he has a big, big week. Yeah, Houston is much improved this year uh, on the offensive side of the ball. I think we've seen them rack up some points and actually force these offenses to stay on the field. I think the worry at the beginning of the year was that teams are going to get so far up on Houston that these play, these players may not end up playing the whole game against Houston because Houston was going to be horrible. It hasn't ended up being the case. Yes, their defense is horrible, but their offense is actually scoring points and keeping the opposing offense on the field to continue to score points as well. So I think that helps keep Pat Fryermuth in the game. Uh, really involved and lots of touchdown opportunities. Plus Deontay Johnson is still on IR. So he's, yep. he's essentially the second on the totem pole in targets, you know, and that showed up last week and that'll definitely carry over this week as well. I agree. All righty. Let's go to your bus tight end now. All right. My bus tight end Hunter Henry playing against Dallas. I know Dallas didn't do great last week against the run like we had been. But they still didn't let Ertz or McBride score any points either. They're still super solid against tight ends. And I think that continues this week against Hunter Henry. I agree. Um, that's just a tough matchup, man. Yeah. And, and you said it best. Like, other players had good games, and it wasn't McBride or Ertz. Right? Yeah. The tight end was shut down. And I'm guessing with another week of practice – it, that defense is going to kind of bring it together a little bit. Um, they won't be on the field near as much if that offense gets it together a little bit this week. So there's going to be a lot less opportunity for Hunter Henry. And I know that Hunter Henry has been doing very well. But yeah. if last week is any indicator, uh, Stevenson's probably going to have a good day there. But Hunter Henry will not. Stevenson could. I, I, think, I think Micah Parsons comes out with something to prove this week on defense. Yeah. I think they get after Mac Jones a little bit more than they got after Josh Dobbs. Yep. But the Jets shut down Henry last week, and I think the Cowboys kind of do the same this week. Yeah. So, and then he gets back on a roll for the next week after that. But this week, no go. All righty. So that's all the booms and busts. Let's get into some streamers really quick because um, I know you you throw those out there for a little added bonus there. So yeah. let's go with your first streamer here, and it's a kicker. Got the old streamer kicker. And I'm surprised he's still on waivers in so many leagues, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Jason Sanders for Miami. You knew I had to have a dolphin on here somewhere, right? Somewhere. Uh, you know, last week he scores 10 points off of just extra points. But he's one of the, he's one of the better legs in the in the league for field goals and consistency there as well. It's such a high powered offense, like you want that on your roster, anyways. Um, but especially like this week, they're playing Buffalo, so you got a high powered offense. They might struggle to score every time they're in the red zone with Buffalo, you know. So I like the chances of Sanders getting a double digits again this week. 
Yeah, I mean, he plays for a team where every time they have a possession, he's probably going to score some sort of points. Whether it's one point or three points, sometimes more, you're almost guaranteed points every possession. Um, I don't know if Sanders, he might be the first kicker that can't make it through a full season this year. His leg may just fall off from between field goals, extra points, and kickoffs. I don't know how he's going to make it through. Uh, the poor guy's going to have to stop practicing so much or something. I don't know. His He's going to get hurt. Um, usually that's a running back issue. I think it might be a kicker issue for Sanders this year. Yeah. I mean, that's some high usage. It looks, it looks like they have their bye week in week 10. So it's, it's essentially going to be like get through week nine without like on one of his kicks, like his whole leg from the knee down, just like going with the ball. I mean, I don't, th- I don't think your kicker should have a 50% snap count, right? Like, what is that? That's uh, You're scoring too many points. I don't know how that's a thing. Exactly. <laughs> He's the highest scorer in the league because of his extra points. <laughs> All righty. Let's go on to then a streamer defense for this week. Yeah, streamer defense, Kansas City Chiefs. Another team like Cleveland's playing a lot better defense than uh, people were expecting coming into the year, I think. Um, playing against the Jets, like Zach Wilson is just not good. Mm-mm. I mean, you got these no names like Josh Dobbs, nobody knew who that was, and he's playing pretty well for Arizona, right? Yes, you got rookies playing pretty good for Carolina, for Houston, and then you've got Zach Wilson, and it's just it's sad. Um, so He's going to take some sacks. He's going to throw probably a, a couple of picks. Um, so I'm I'm loving me some Kansas City Chiefs defense this weekend. I agree. I think they've been really impressive. Um, starting out the gate with Detroit, a really high-powered offense, they held their own, um, yes, they did. honestly, against them. Didn't make for a great fantasy day, but it, they still held their own more so than you would think. Then they came out against Jacksonville and actually had a pretty good week. Mm-hmm. And then Chicago, of course, they did pretty good. But when you think about Kansas City in the past and their defenses, that's been their weak point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so this is, like you said, it's not the Kansas City Chiefs defense of the past. Uh, they're much improved and and much more impressive than anyone had thought they would be. Yeah, 100%. And the matchup is just good. Yeah. Boy, I mean, Aaron Rod- right. Losing Aaron Rodgers is – hurt that team so much yeah i mean chris jones got paid and he's back they've got a really young stud core of linebackers like they're just they're really coming together well as a defense yeah it's it's fun to watch all right guys that's going to do it for our booms and busts and streamers here uh i do want to just one more time encourage you to go to fantasyfootballadvice.com and sign up for the Fantasy Football Advice Network where you can get 24-7 fantasy football advice. Check out articles, videos, podcasts, all the all the different tools you can get on there to help you win your league. It's free to sign up. There's a mobile app so you can have fantasy football advice on the go all the time. Join the community, have some fun, escape all the politics and, and CrossFit workouts and anniversary posts and birthday posts and all that stuff that's just distracting when really all you want is fantasy football because we know what's important in life our priorities are straight so with that being said that's going to do it for us this week 